Welcome back to Cursed Mining and today we are taking a look at the Baikal Giant B Miner. Actually I was in the middle of preparing another video, GPU content between the ASIC videos, but this one arrived earlier than I expected, so we'll be taking a first look at it together. We'll unbox, set it up and talk a bit about what it can mine and if it is or if it was worth it. While unboxing, let me say that this is no new machine, neither the model itself nor the one I have here, but I want to do content on every miner I can get my hands on and I've had my eyes on the new giant since they came out. and. If you know the channel, you know my history with Baikal. So here we are. Classic Baikal Red. A bit heavier and bulkier than the Giant Plus, simply because we got three hash boards instead of two. Giant Plus need four six pin connectors, this Giant B needs six. Baikals are built similar to end miners, except that you always have an orange pie as controlling unit instead of control boards end miners have. And I never like that the pies are actually at the exhaust, it's getting cooked with the miner. This one comes with splitters like most Baikals, but I try to avoid them as best as possible possible. From what I see here, this used miner is in better condition than the giants we bought new from Baikal back in 2017. So I see no need to open it up now and clean the PCBs or anything before testing. It probably won't stay here in the long term. I just wanted to test it for a bit, do a video, maybe more if you're interested in something particular and then give it away or sell locally. Let's see about that. So while setting it up, let's talk about requirements. We have five different algos to choose from. Three Blake variants, Library and Pascal. Two of the algos use around 400 watts, Blake 256 R8 and Pascal go down to only 210 watts. So you'd want a PSU with enough headroom for the algos you'd be mining on mostly or generally enough if you're auto switching which is normally possible with bikels. So I'll go for a 750 watt HP server PSU with breakout board for now just to be safe. With the breakout board I have no problems with these six connectors without using any splitters. You'll see on screen that I decided to power it from below instead of above. It always annoyed me with the bikel that the connectors are at the exhaust. It's limiting possibilities in, in cable management. Let's hook it up and let it spin. Now we have to search for the machine in our network. I use advanced IP scanner for this. With this tool you can find the miner or simply access your own router, then set a fixed IP if you like. And the standard password with Baikals is always, well, Baikal. It's not bad to change that by the way. We have had a case of an overtaken Baikal in our Discord. Cheers, man. Then you can set up your pool info in the dashboard and can also tweak some settings there like fan speed or commands for services like Nightshash. Honestly, I did not expect the miner to arrive so fast, so I'll probably go in hunting and research mode and will test myself through the Argos and a variety of pools. But still, most feasible would be to leave it running on Pascal, where it will only use around 210 watts. And then again, I would like to downgrade the PSU it's running on. From the dashboard, I can see that Pascal just runs cool. Pull down down the fan to 60% and now the miner is still not going above 40 degrees celsius, so absolutely no problem, even though it's between another ASIC and the GPU mining rig. Lastly, let's talk about if this machine is worth it in the here and now. Please mind that I always advocate not to look at dollar per day and see mining more long term, but looking at recent numbers, especially with the drops we have seen, nope, the miner is not worth it except you have free electricity or you get it for virtually nothing. Then again, this miner came out in January 2018. Even if 2018 was a bad year for crypto in terms of price, I'm sure if you got it when it came out, you had a profitable year with it. Until the hordes of alternative Blake miners came out like the Antminer A3 or even more machines by Baikal itself. Also, Siacoin forked away anyway. Now it's not unique anymore, but the fact that it is a multi-algo miner and it does not cost much power kept it profitable for a long while. Don't forget that this is almost exactly one year old. So this video is no Baikal advertisement to tell you to go out and buy used giants. I had content on the business practices of Baikal on the channel too. It's rather a look at the small unique miner of which there are now many many varieties. It also reminded me how many miners came out in 2018 or let's at least say were released to the public in 2018. It would be really interesting to know how long these machines really have been in existence. So that's already it for today. We took a look at the miner I wanted to get my hands on for a long time, even though it's mostly outdated now. If you have or ever had a giant bee, how were your experiences with it? 
It would be interesting if you'd like to share a bit. As I said, it probably won't stay here though. If Baikal, I'd go for one of the newer models, which were actually the downfall for the profitability of this miner. Thank you very much for tuning in again. Let me know if you want to see anything specific about the miner. Next week, it's back to our regular content. All the best to you. Happy mining and bye. Thank you.